Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to attempt to build a uh, workbench for my garage because right now I've been working with a, let's say, a makeshift bench with two saw horses and an old tabletop. I'm probably going to reuse the old tabletop as my top. It's a tabletop that I had made a table a long time ago and uh, it had split, so I just use it as a workbench. So I'll probably use that again and I'll make uh, two by four legs and use whatever scraps I have. I'm not going to buy anything except for the wheels and a small vice which I already bought and I'll show you that. I did have a set of wheels that my brother gave me but I didn't use them. I think they're a little too small. I'll use them for something else. Uh, also the, the shaft was riveted and I want a bolt on shaft for the wheels just in case. This makes it a lot stronger. So I'll show you what they look like. So these were the original wheels I was going to use. I think they're maybe, I don't know, inch and a half or two inch, whatever they might call them. And then I got these which are three inch polyurethane which also lock each one has its own lock these did not lock so i want to make sure it locks so i can lock it and make it stable and uh i did happen to have a lowe's gift card so they didn't cost me anything so i got that and then this i purchased for twenty dollars that i my gift card ran out it's a woodworker's vice which i'll incorporate onto the side of the bench so there you go so i'm gonna wing it i'll try to figure out how to make it okay so i had to put in a dead battery so we're back in business um i'm gonna use this new vice like i said it was 20 bucks at lowe's so between that and the new wheels everything else is gonna be this old wood down here this old tabletop and i mean i got some wood over here i got some wood over here some wood up there you can tell there's wood everywhere so i think i should be able to make one out of all of this scrap and these two by fours that were from previous things i was going to make two by fours went from like three and change to over uh well about seven bucks a piece i think i just saw them today at 6.89 a piece which is insane a two by three is now basically more than a two by four was so anyway so i'm going to put that stuff on it i'm going to take this mitre saw and i want to sink it in to make this level with the top of the of the table so that the wood don't flop around and i'm going to try to make it about eight foot i'll see how much room i have here here. I'm just basically gonna wing it and try to see what I can do I might even incorporate this toolbox if I can take it off and maybe put it underneath it on it Actually, I probably could have used those wheels that are on it I didn't think of that but anyway I'm gonna use these wheels so I'll try to incorporate that into the table so that it doesn't take up room next to it all right here we go okay so the old tabletop is six feet I'll cut that in half spread it out uh, and put a space that's uh, 25 inches or two feet one inch which is the size of my mita saw from the wall and I'll make a frame based Based on that and then I'll use the two tabletop and once I cut it in half on each side I'll compensate for that height and then I'll make a little platform for the saw uh, a few inches down below okay so I unbolted these brackets this was for the uh, mitre saw table that you could transport with and, and use like on a job site I guess so I took these off so that the mitre box would sit uh, more flush to the tabletop and I could try to figure out what I got to do so you can see right there I laid it down onto the table and in order to swing the angle I'm gonna have to cut an angle on the tabletop on each side so I'll figure that out but I want to make sure that my legs don't come out too far I wanted to sit it about where it has to be and then I'll make the legs okay so I'm gonna set it about two inches in which would make the width of my leg from the front here where I'm gonna stand to the back wall 31 inches so I can cut the angle and get a full swing of my arm on the saw Okay, so I'm cutting my beams at 28 inches um, deep plus the inch and a half of each two by four on the outside will give me my 31. I'm gonna cut four of these for the top, four of these for the bottom at 28 inches, and then I'll use eight foot two by fours to go across the length. And I also decided not to put the um, metal cabinet underneath because it would have made the unit too high. So I'll just leave it on the outside and I'll just build maybe some shelves under it and whatnot. As I go along, maybe I'll even find a spot for my, um, my other table saw. I'll see if I can incorporate that in it as well. All right, so I was looking into the table saw here and what I decided was instead of cutting a spot out in my table for it i'm gonna build the table to the height of it so when i want to use it i can just lay it next to my table and use my table as a guide for it for the you know for the long pieces of wood instead of incorporating it into the table because i really hardly use it so i think it would be a good idea to just make it the same height so that's the plan okay so that's what the frame is going to look like on the bottom and the two center beams are going to be the width of the mitre saw plate can sit on top of those so you want to measure off center uh, mine's 25 inches so 12 and a half each way and put the beams on the inside of the markings so you can lay your plywood or whatever you need to do on top of that. I'm gonna drill and screw off this frame. Thanks. 
I'll go ahead and make the legs for one, two, the four corners, and then the braces for the center for the center part. And I'll show you how that's done. Okay, so I cut 28 inch two by fours, two for each corner, and I had one four by four, so I used that for one of the corners so I can save a two by four since I'm trying not to buy any wood. I'll just put it in the back so nobody sees it, or I mean, it doesn't matter. It's probably stronger than the two two by fours anyway. And now I'll put those on, screw those together. What I'll do now is I'll put two of these together, drill a couple holes, and make these corners a lot stronger this way and level with the saw, and then I'll put them on the uh, base. Okay, that way now, it's a nice strong corner. Okay, so I'll zoom through the other two really quick. Two. All right, the four legs are screwed together. Now I'll screw them to the base. Okay, now I'll box out each side on either side of the miter saw. All right, guys, I decided to add the wheels next instead of uh, going over the top, only because the center legs, I decided also to use the smaller wheels in the middle so it doesn't dip over time. And in order to do that, I'm gonna have to make the center beams an inch and a half longer than the corner beams because the wheels are smaller. So I wanna put these on and then use the smaller wheels on the ends of the boards so I know I'm hitting the ground with them. All right, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put them on with these little hex screws that have a little drill bit tip on them, if you can see. It's like they're made by Powers Fasteners. I also have some washers and I'll screw these in like so and we'll get these legs on. Okay, so those drill bit tips on those fasteners, these screws, is really not that good. So I'm gonna pre-drill. And I'll still use these, but the drill bit itself, maybe it's for sheet metal, I'm not sure. But it didn't work out well. So I'll pre-drill. Get to the other one. Flip it and do the other two. Looks like my base, my legs aren't really flush, so I'm gonna have to fix that. Get a clamp. See, if that's not level, your rollers aren't going to sit nice, your wheels. So now, nice, easy roller. I can lock it up. So this is what I was talking about. These smaller wheels that I'm going to put in the middle so that it doesn't dip, because it is eight feet long, um, are an inch and a half shorter than the big wheels on the ends. So I have to stick the center beams down lower so that these will touch the ground. That's the plan. Okay, so I made the center one an inch and a half longer, put a level on it, and it's 
perfectly level. So what I had to do is, like I said, make this leg an inch and a half longer, and there's the wheel at the bottom, smaller wheel, just to hold the weight. So, and then I'll add this here now, both sides, and it'll give it a little extra, a little extra uh, help to keep it from bowing. Okay, so I'm basically gonna make that center beam uh, three more times with the small wheels. Okay, and I'll probably put you on some fast motion. All right, so I made one small mistake on uh, putting these blocks of wood for the for the other set of wheels. Um, you have to make this block here short enough where it won't stick up past the other two by four, because otherwise, when you put your your top or your shelf of plywood, it's going to stick out through it. So one of them is slightly over. So I really didn't measure for that. So I'm going to take it off and fix that. this one all right I'm not sure when she shut off but I got the all the legs on so now I'm gonna wrap around the bait leave the center open in the front so I can set up my saw uh, shelf clamp this up okay I cut the 228s for the side tops first, so I can get my uh, length for the eight footer. Otherwise, I don't know where I'm sitting, so I'd rather do that. Get that going. Snug it up and then tap it into place. Now I can tell where this has to end, even with here. So I just gotta square it up a little bit before I screw it in. So this is a good piece of three quarter inch and uh, I'm gonna use this for the base of the uh, circles. I mean the uh, miter box, so the miter will sit on this. I think it's thick enough. I'll take a measurement on it. Just under three quarter, 16th under three quarter. So I'll work with that since we're doing it out of scrap wood. Okay, so I gotta cut two 28 inch long two by fours to make the shelf for the saw. And 
I'll clamp those on for now so you can see if they're the right height. And then I'll cut these. You can sit the saw in there, but I also have to cut my old countertop, which I'm gonna, I mean my uh, tabletop for each side. Another 28, this thing will be getting close to being done. I'll estimate the difference for the depth and mark it and clamp it there. So the saw is just over three and a half in height. So I'll make mine three and a half, or rather the saw be slightly higher. Three and a half minus this. Let's see, we'll call it three quarters. We'll call it three quarters for now. Three and a half deep minus three quarters. That would be what? Two and three quarters? Two and three quarters. Plus we gotta add the top, which is an inch and a half. So we gotta raise it up another inch and a half. I think two and three quarters will do it. I'll mark two and three quarters, clamp it in. make the platform okay now I'll make the front pieces now that I got these in just wanted to make sure everything was square I'm gonna go ahead and cut uh, both front pieces out of pressure treated just so it looks even that's why I need a bench everything falls Okay, that's it for the front pieces. And now I will uh, cut that top in half, place half of it on each side, because it's only six foot and this is now eight. And uh, I'll see what I'll do in the middle um, behind the saw. Maybe I'll just leave it all that height, I'm not sure. So we'll see. So I got these clamped on for now. Let's check the height, but I gotta cut that top. Okay, so that old tabletop was uh, handmade by me back in the day. Split, I cut it where the split was, made it two pieces, put it back together as a bench. So I'm gonna use it as the bench. I just flipped it upside down so I don't hit any of the pocket hole screws when I cut it in half to put on each side of this bench. I'll actually take those brackets off that were holding it together. Since it is two pieces, it'd be easier for me to cut. It's missing all the pocket holes. Okay, it looks like I'm gonna to have to put a beam across here on the inside because I forgot this was two pieces. It's gonna need some strength on both sides. So it looks pretty good. I think it's gonna work out fine. We need 228 back here. I have enough wood for that. It's starting to run out. Got just enough. It's like the sun outside, it's a killer. Now I'm gonna cut this piece in half for the other part of the top. That the Walt saw is a beast. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. The two halves of the old table are on top. Frame is done. It might not be the prettiest, but it's strong. I might just leave the center all low, only because what am I going to do behind the saw anyway? But we'll see. I might block it off something. Maybe put a hole in for um, getting the sawdust with a vacuum. We needed this to be three and a half. Like down here. We want just under three and a half. About three and a half. I'm gonna drill and put one screw 
in each one just to hold it because that saw is heavy. And then I can adjust from there if I have to. You'll see how the saw fits in there. I know I have to cut an angle in the front of this right here so that I can get the full, I think the saw goes like 55 degrees, the full angle. That's why I set this back so I can cut the front without hitting the leg. So we'll see if I measure that properly. looks pretty good if you can see the sore is slightly above the wood because if you go this way she'll touch which is what you want same with this side slightly I'll grab a piece of wood just to check it out Probably gonna have to leave that back open as you can see the back of the saw has a a knob that's actually can you see that this knob right here is low so really what I would only get maybe one beam in there maybe eight inches if I could if anything but I don't think it's even worth it I'll just leave it like that if the sun makes it dark in here let me see something Shut the door. Shut the door. See if that helps with the sun. Okay, I shut the door. I think that might be a little bit better. But anyway, like I was saying, the saw is pretty big, so you need the room behind it for the handle and some other stuff. So I might as well just leave the whole thing low and have a little work table on both sides, which is fine. It's a lot more than I ever had, and I used up most of my wood. I'll see what I can do on the bottom to make shelves. Right now it's empty, it's just, I don't have enough wood. But I do have some beams, so I'll, I'll figure it out. As you can see underneath, let's see. So you got the locking legs. I have to screw down this top. I'll tighten this up as best I could. Like I said, that was an old tabletop. Now that I know everything fits, I will cut it and uh, I'll cut the angles in the front and I'll screw it down. So you can see underneath needs some kind of shelving. And like I said, this has a this handle back here and the saw actually has to tip, which I'm not sure if I can even do that. Let me see. Yeah, there's plenty of room here. Go both ways, plenty of room. So I'll leave this open in the back. This is where I was talking about, I have to, without cutting this at an angle, I can't, I can only get what, maybe 38 degrees. So I'm gonna cut this, cut this back, see how much I can get out of it. I want the whole, I want the whole angle, obviously. Okay, so it looks like in my original. I have this section here coming out all the way also for the saw. So the saw really needs to come out to here, if you see what I mean. So I gotta put a two by four across the front. Not a big deal. So I put the two by four up across the front and that's where I screw it down. So I put another piece in here, hopefully I have another piece that fit, and then that should give me the room I need. So you can see I had it originally, and if I want to bring this wood out, I can just cut the wood. Right, so I'm gonna add in that two by four and see where it stands from there. Okay, so luckily I got a piece that's 26 and a quarter long. That's the last piece of two by four. So I'm gonna cut a, about a, a half inch off of there, so get it to fit in between here. We also decided to put it in front of the plywood. That way the plywood doesn't chip away. And then I'll screw it in. It'll be even with two by fours under it. Yeah, a little bit off. Because of the thickness of the plywood, I'm still a lot stronger that way. Got a little 
countersunk head screw holes to bolt it down. I'll put it in the back as well. I just want to make it so that it stays where I want it. And now I'll cut these top boards at an angle. Get the saw out if I need to. Okay, I clamp down the top and the back so that it doesn't move and I can position this one, mark it and cut it. See, it's a little bit warped this wood, but I'll screw it down on top and straighten it out as best I could. Some good measuring. That's some good measuring right there. I'm gonna cut this corner off. Let's see. Perfect. If you guys can see that. Cut the angle. Now when I move my saw, as you can see, it doesn't encroach on the legs, which is what I wanted. I'll file this a little bit and, you know, or sand it and smooth out this corner so nothing gets caught on it. And I'll do the same on the other side. Let me screw down this side first so I can use the clamps again. Looks like all my batteries are dying. But <clears throat> I'm just going to be screwing off the top here with a countersink. I got a countersink uh, bit and a drill and I'm gonna sink in a bunch of screws all around this so that it doesn't warp. So it was warped a little bit. I clamped it down so I can get the warp out of it. And I'm just gonna screw the whole top down. No reason to video it anyway. And I'll let you see it when it's done. And these batteries are charged. All three batteries dead. All right guys, so that's the finished product. Came out pretty good. Fits in here nicely. Eight feet long. Got my saw mounted. I have to make some shelves on the bottom. I had three extra deck boards. I laid them across there because they're also eight footers, just for now to see what it would look like. And uh, maybe I'll add, probably would only need maybe two more deck boards and I can probably deck the whole bottom for storage. And up here, where I cut the angle, this side came out nice. Over here it's 50 degrees, but I didn't realize this side is 60 degrees. So I had to cut into it a little bit. So I kind of screwed up a little bit right there, but it's still fine, it's still good. It's got the whole 60 degrees still. I had to cut into it a little bit so I can get my hand in here and get the 60 degrees. Got full motion all the way around the back. And it's a nice big workbench. Better than these saw horses I was using. And it didn't really cost me anything except for the wheels since I had all the spare wood. So with all that wood that I had extra, this is what's left, not bad. So there it is. It's just a quick down and dirty workbench. Not the prettiest, but it works. I'm not into, uh, you know, making the screws not show and all that stuff. It, it's a workbench, so I'm gonna work with it. I'm not gonna be afraid of it. I'm gonna probably bolt a vise or two on it. I think I have a, a regular vise and I also have a wood vise that I just purchased that I'll add to it and uh, I'm gonna utilize it. I'll, I can Now I can roll it out. It's very easy to roll, which I was surprised that for such a big item, you can roll this thing so easy. I don't wanna roll it out again, but it just pulls right out. Not bad at all. You just roll that right out. So I can move it around for work. Or just leave it against the wall. Block the wheels. And there it is. Not going anywhere. Now it won't move. Alright, guys, so that's it for today. That's the uh, workbench. I got it done. I'm pretty decent. Um, I didn't have any plans. I just winged it and tried to figure it out. So. If I can do it, you can do it. DIY it. For the saw, it was very easy. I was a little, I was sweating that, but it was three and a half inches thick. You just make a platform, lower it down. So that was nice. And uh, that's it. So I, I can fit all my tools. I can cut wood now without having it hang and fall. And I have some storage. So very, very workable item. Okay, so while I was cleaning up, I decided to just take those three boards and spread them evenly apart because I'm just gonna use it for storage anyway. And I screwed them down. So I don't know if you can see, see that, but I spread them evenly to fill in the center. And I just threw some stuff up there. So for now, 
it's good. I'll add another board to the front next time I get some scrap to fill in that gap as well. So I think I spread them maybe about two inches apart each and it filled in the whole center except for the back, but I'm not using the back anyway. So I'll put maybe one more board in the front if I get some scraps so or maybe I even have three pieces. So I'll check on that. All right guys, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. That's your DIY workbench. Quick, easy, one day job on a Saturday. You can get it done. Use scrap wood if you have it or you go to Home Depot and get a couple of two by fours. It's all two by fours and uh, the top is actually two by eights, but it was an old tabletop, but you can make it out of plywood if you want. Uh, the bottom, like I said, I'll make some shelves and, uh, and that's it. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you guys next time. That was an old attic entrance that I replaced for somebody at their house. I took their old one and used it in my garage. I'm not sure if I talked about that once before. Missed. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, wait, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button, hit that subscribe button. Come on, I, I do some stuff, right? I mean, I'm DIY Dad. Help me out.